welcome back to Vigor. It is your boy, Stealth Jet, leader of the JSS. I'm jealous of you all. Actually, no, I'm not, because at the time of this recording, it is just about to be. Actually, I'll tell a fib. At the time of this recording, it is going to be Sunday at midnight. You all. You all are seeing this video. What? Saturday at midnight. Which means you got the single best day of the week ahead of you. And if you're watching this on the uh in the on the United States, then power to you. I hope you have the greatest Saturday of the year coming up. But if you're somewhere else in the world, I hope your Saturday, if not Sunday morning, early Sunday morning, is going to be great too. However, regardless of what time zone you're in, you're watching this video. So, I appreciate you being here. I sincerely appreciate you being here. This has been one of the weirdest loading screens I've ever seen. There is a total of eight people in this bitch. I'm used to like 12, right? So what makes this encounter, what makes this encounter so small? Like did some did people just not want to play this map and the servers are like, you know what, here's eight people. Just throw them in there, bitch. Just, just throw them in there. Is that what happened? Well, I point that out because I feel like I do better in an encounter where there's a whole lot of people. That's what I feel like. We're just gonna have to see if I do good in this encounter. So I do my usual thing of rushing to the nearest spawn point to see if I can catch somebody running away from it. But here's the thing. There's only eight people. So when I come over here and look at the top of the hill to my left and I don't see anybody, I'm like, wait a minute. Well, down. Free comm station, I guess. Open the door, close the door, keep it moving. And in case you're wondering, yeah, season 12 gameplay it's around the corner, but we got to get through season 11 gameplay first. But it's around the corner. Just wait. So again, I do my usual strat of bolting it down this hill. And I must say it, this part of the map reminds me of Descent. If you don't know what Descent is, it is that map where there is no cover. And it is a straight downhill descent. And then a steep uphill a cent to get to an exit. Yeah, it's the map that starts with a K. Anyways, so I found a rifle. Okay, cool. But then somebody uses the disruptive tower. The more you play this game, the more you just know where stuff it, where stuff is. You know what I'm saying? So I'm rushing over here to the area near the tower. But as I said before, there's a fine line between approach and detect. You want to get as close as possible without being detected.
it's not about how many shots you fire. It's about how many shots that land. We've seen a total of three guys here. A total of three guys here. But I only fired one bullet. It's quality, not quantity. It's where you place your shots, not how many you fire. And I ain't gonna lie to you folks, that Molson shot, I was not too sure about it. I wasn't. Because I had to look and see if he was still there. Now, if you're wondering why am I not taking that airdrop, is because it's too obvious. There's myself, two dead bodies, and I killed you know, somebody that got killed, killed somebody else. So this is half the lobby right now. That's four people, including myself. There are still three other people left. To my knowledge. We don't know where they're at currently. But they're still here. That's three potential spectator screens waiting for me right there. So why not place a little, a little bait? Why not place a fly trap and see how many flies come and stick to it? You know, assuming that there are three flies in the in the mix right now. That's why I placed that alarm trap near that airdrop. And this is some level two shit right here. The airdrop itself tells me that somebody's nearby because once that flashing cube, I'm checking my iron my G3 iron sight right there. Once that flashing cube, once that flashing box turns into a stick figure then automatically I know that, okay, somebody took the bait. However, if two people approach that airdrop from different directions, let alone the same direction, there's going to be crows. So, that's another way I know somebody's there. Level 3, that alarm trap, can be heard from anywhere on the map. It's fucking loud. So, technically speaking, that is a super trap. Now, the real question is this, will the trap work, or am I just being too, how can I put it, or am I overthinking it? Because technically speaking, I could have just grabbed that airdrop, and I could have just ran down this death tunnel and left out that way. Because I'm pretty sure I don't have five fuel, and you need five fuel to take that dock exit. But no. There are still minimum three people in this lobby. Like I said, three people, all dead. Then myself, which makes four people all together. And then on top of that, actually I said three. There's four more people too, actually. So like I said, there are four more people here, to my knowledge. I don't know why I said three in the first place. So where can they be at? In the time of me talking, did you realize that there is no signs of anybody being here? I'm a quote, uh, not Ed Wantzler, one of the Wantzler boys from the Boondocks, the smart one, not the one who went to war, the, not the one who went to war, but the one with the American flag bandana around his head. He said, the evidence of absence is not the ab is not the um, absence of evidence. What he just said was, just because you you have you find proof that nobody's there, that don't mean that nobody's not there. Ghosts, fam. People can be here, and you won't know it until you try doing something stupid. When I say something stupid, I mean something that you think that is safe. But it's actually not safe because someone is watching you the entire time. And look, this is Fisk Fabric. It's a big map. Actually, I say it's a medium sized map. But there are plenty of places for somebody to hide. Plenty of places. Now, there's a second airdrop, too. How much you want to bet that that airdrop is camped? 
And before I can even finish that sentence, somebody already got or somebody already got said airdrop. Like I said. Or like uh one of the once or boys from the Boondock said. Evidence of absence is not the ab it's not the absence of evidence. Just because you think nobody's around doesn't mean that nobody's around. Now I'm also waiting to hear some more gunshots at the top of the map. That's why I'm coming up here, just in case I hear more gunshots. But also, an optional objective appears as well. The detector is right there too. Now this is me being on high alert. This is rainy Fisk fabric. Misty Fisk fabric. You don't see shit until it's too late. So I'm checking all the little crevices, all the little cracks, all the little corners to make sure I don't get hit. Boom. The detector's used. Run down, hide my head real quick, and wouldn't you know it. The trap worked. Somebody's there. That's the barred house as well. And recently, I found out people will stay in the barred house once they get the safe in the barred house for the entire game before they leave. So, I got a G3 on me and a shotgun. If he's there and he still is there, then maybe I can kill him. That's how I'm rushing over there right now. It's not because of me just want to get a kill. It's because if I do get five fuel, I can leave out that way clean and not have to worry about exposing myself going down further into the map. You know what I'm saying? Keep your presence unknown, even though I just fucking used the detector, but we're going to overlook that. We're going to overlook that. Now, here approaches the house. Here approaches the barred house. That's right there to my right. So while approaching this hill that's to my left, I have like second thoughts. If I approach that barred house, I'm encroaching on his territory. Chances are he's probably in the house in the corner on one knee. Chances are. So what's the best way to approach this? If I go up there, it's going to be crows. So that's why I pull out my shotgun and I walk up there and I believe I'm going to get a, you know, a second wind or not. Nope, I'm going to go straight into it. And then I back off. I back off because like, shit, well, now he knows. Uh, assuming the player knows what crows mean, if he's ever read Edgar Allan Poe, the raven. I'm going to say a crow is a raven for the sake of this video. So, technically speaking, right now, I should have kept going. I should have. But the skill wasn't developed of seeing what's inside the barred house. Instead, what I'm going to do is drop a mortar strike on the barred house. And sure enough, I hit something. Also, my alarm trap. Those four hits were directly on that house. Now, it didn't kill him. It didn't kill him. But he's hurt nonetheless. And that's him running away. Now, at the time of this recording, at the time of this recording, I developed the skill of invading the barred house. But at the time of this gameplay, I haven't. So what you're going to see is me trying to hit old boy with his G3. When in the entire time, I could have just walked up to the barred house, crouch walk, and listen to what corner of the house he was in. One more shot on my fire here, I believe, to say GG. Or one more couple of shots, rather. And I'm going to leave. There's nothing else left for me to do in this encounter. Now, is this me saying I made a mistake? No. This is me saying that 
in future videos, I learned from this, how can I put it? I left aggression on the table. Cause I could have walked up to that barn house, I could have. But the real question is this, did a trap work? Well, technically speaking, yeah, because he was at the barred house, and the airdrop was right there, but he didn't do anything to get said airdrop. He was scared. He was worried that somebody was nearby. Technically, the trap worked. I just didn't get notification of it until I hit that detector. But like I said, like I said, I could have walked up to that barred house. I could have listened to what corner he was in, and I could have done what you're going to see in future videos. So what can you learn from this encounter? Number one, just because you hear gunshots and just because you see somebody don't mean you are obligated to shoot. Just because you saw somebody does not mean you gotta go pro and start blasting. You feel me? Just because you saw somebody, you don't gotta shoot. Sometimes it's best to wait and see how much attention that they gathered. Because they could be running they could be running to a barred house. They could be running to a time safe. Or they could be running because they're pursued. And if you watch my streams, you'll know. I like to stalk somebody and see what they're up to before I act on myself. Lesson number two you can learn from this video. If somebody hits the detector and you're still in the same area, you are setting yourself up for death. You are. And y'all seen that in previous videos, but you're gonna see it come into effect way more in upcoming videos. And so, I'm gonna ask that you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss my season 12 gameplay as well as some dirty ass tricks that I pull off as well. I hope to catch you in the next episode. Until next time, peace.